in the center. All right, let's talk about insecurity now. I think we said a lot about uh, other things. Let's we still have some other things to tackle here. Now, let's talk about insecurity in Nigeria. Now, how do you think we can tackle uh, insecurity? Is it by human intelligence or by <laughs> artificial intelligence? Because it's, it's as though human intelligence is not really working at this time, maybe artificial intelligence is going to work. I don't know. It's just a question I'm going to throw to the table. So let's have answers. We'll start from you, Samuel. For your next part, yeah? Um, I've been in this country now since almost uh, um, when I retired from the Tripolis, I came back to Nigeria and I did some training with some officers. Mm -hmm. And from my own experience looking at the whole country, um, when it comes to security, I know a lot, a lot is said about the Nigerian police that um, they, be, they corrupt, the corruption is the Nigerian police. Mm -hmm. These, if you drive down the street, you offer them money or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, um, I quite agree with that. But to my point, there's corruption in everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. But with the Nigerian police, I interact with them, I talk to them. A sergeant in Nigeria police is making maybe seventy thousand a, a, a month. A month. Huh. Yeah, that's like almost one hundred and fifty dollars, one hundred and twenty dollars. I don't even make that in a day. I make more than that in a day. And when you talk to these officers, um, they talk about um, when a armed robber is coming and they engage with an armed robber, huh. that one of their fellow officers got shot, killed in in line of duty. The officers ask to contribute money among themselves. To do the funeral in in the state, God forbid. Well, before I retire, if anything happens to me while I'm on duty, I'm well taken care of. Of course, my insurance is paid, my my kids is set, my salary, you know. So all that stuff put together, we when you're talking about insecurity, you have to be able to pay the people protecting your life. If a senator is making 29 million a month, and you have an officer that is protecting you and is making 60, 70 thousand a year mm. a, a month. If somebody wants to shoot the snake, am I going to stand in the front? Mm. I would do the same thing myself. Mm -hmm. I would, you know, so insecurity in Nigeria, when you want to talk about you have to, you have to pay the officers good salary. The recruitment, the recruitment should be fair. Should the training should be more intensive. I went to the um, the Nigerian the um, police college here in, in Lagos. The amount of the, even when you look at the barracks where the officer stays. I mean, it's, to me, it's not even fit for human beings. Mm -hmm. The amount of the, even their uniform, up to the shoe, they also have to pay for it. Yeah. Up to the uniform, they also have to pay for it. When you're paying somebody fifty, sixty thousand dollars a naira a month, and you put them out there, they have to come from their house to take a traffic to go to work. Mm -hmm. They have to pay. You, that's a recipe for, for corruption. So of course they're gonna be, they're gonna be corrupted. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In security in Nigeria, you have to pay the people that are securing you. Of course. And there's this saying: before I left, before I retired, I went to like almost Nigerian churches in the state in Detroit. I'm trying to recruit Nigerians to become a police officer. No one, because they have the stigma. Way back home when you're Nigerian, they say, "Oh no, no, I won't. we have Nigerian doctors, we have Nigerian lawyers." We have Nigerian engineers, we have Nigerian pilot, but I was the only one that break through that through that field. And I, in as much as I tried to bring other people into it, it's just that stigma that, oh, I mean, when you tell people you're a, you're a police officer in Nigeria, the way they look at you, mm -hmm. so, and that stigma follow you abroad too. So mm -hmm. nobody want to do that job. But if the, if the payment, the salary is good, the structure is good, we'll, it will be more safe because when you pay people, you demand, you know, you demand. You motivate them. Yeah, you motivate them. And people, you know, the, and the quality of people that will be going. Right now, I, I don't even think we have every, any graduates that say, oh, I want to, I, I'm going to school. When I finish, I want to become a police officer huh. in Nigeria. <laughs> you know, they are going somewhere else. So you have less, maybe high school dropout or something that want to go into that field. Mm. So the quality of the people you get in is, is less. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, basically, so now the question is, Human intelligence, how do we go about this to tackle our insecurity? Because in as much as we might actually want to use the artificial intelligence, we still need a human intelligence running through it. But well, how do we go about this? I'll, I'll give a brief example, then I'll let other people join in. You know, um, American was looking for Osama bin Laden for years. Mm -hmm. He was bombing the wrong place. 
until we have human intelligence that can actually pinpoint. You know, there are some guys, if I don't use no phone, I'm not on social media, I'm not on Facebook, how can you find me? Mm. The bad guys knows the dummies would commit a crime and post on the and post on the Facebook. <laughs> to make it easy for police officers don't to get, don't get them. But the smart ones, they shy away from mm. from any social uh, any social media. So by having human intelligence, sometimes you have to go down to the to the lowest. Mm. I'll give you an example when um, there was a there was a um, human trafficking in, in in Detroit. This guy was um, posting on the internet. He was using minor as a prostitute, 13, 14 years old, mm. and he will he will, he will post them on the line. People will call. When you call him, then you you know make the arrangement. Then you send you send the guys and the the, the, the minors yeah. to to the hotel room, and they, it's a section of the police where it's called the vice. So I was part of that detail. Then because I'm a, I'm a foreigner, I'm an African American, I have an accent. They say, "Oh, Samuel, this will be your this will be your role. We want you to call this guy and see if you can entrap the guy to the room." So I pick up the phone. I call the guy. Say, "Hey, I'm a truck driver, a cab driver. Hey, I'm just in town. I need two females." Say, "What age?" Say, "What age can you get me?" He said, 15, 14, I said, good. So, <laughs> so he sent those two, um, girls. two girls to the room. We was able, with that, with the intelligence we got from those girls, mm -hmm. from those minors, we was able to track him. To track him. So what I'm saying is you can, you can have all the gadgets in the world. Mm -hmm. Without somebody being spied, without a spy or a human being on the floor, it doesn't do no good. Mm -hmm. So. And American lay that really hard way because for years we were born being the rock. And Osama bin Laden was somewhere close mm -hmm. to the Navy base mm -hmm. until there's a human intelligence that can pinpoint the actual location. That's how they were able to get it. Okay, all right. Uh, I, I, I want to agree with uh, what you have said. And um, one of the things I still want to commend this administration again is that on November 26th last year, they announced the increment in salaries across board for the Nigerian uh, police and the armed forces, uh, especially, especially because there was a general morale, that, the morale was low, general. Um, be that as it may, that's not enough. And uh, I'm of the opinion, like you have said, that we have to at first make our security outfits very attractive for certain people that are highly intelligent to be willing to join. You know, an average Nigerian, if you want, you want to, if you ask what do you want to be in future, it's either they want to be a politician or be a musician because they understand that that's the quick way Can to wealth, you? to make money. But if you, if people understand that, oh, there's a reward for being intelligent. Nigerians right now, those that are really highly intelligent, are going into tech for fraud. Those guys are intelligent. Let's, let's, not, let's not rule that out before you can sit in your room with a laptop and defraud someone else in another country. If those, if those talents are probably a nest rightly, mm -hmm. they will do so well as fast. Intelligent reporting is concerned. So what, 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 I, what I think is the way forward is that we have sample uh, or tickets of people that are actually intelligent, the likes of Abakari. I don't know if you've heard about Abakari that leads IRC, him and his team. You know, they, they were the one that busted uh, what's the name of this kidnapper, uh, this this big gun that is still in custody right now. Evans. Uh, if in yeah. Advance, yeah. They were, and they've been on each in fact they were the one that actually intervened in the in the kidnap and they bring that almost led to the bring back our boys, whatever that they intervened. And but how much is the salary? There? I, I'm still com I'm still coming back. I'm, I'm saying intelligent people like that. If it is more attractive, there are more intelligent yeah. people. You know, I already said that they would have moved in. That that would not can um, relate to a collaboration that they would do more things. But when you have only few of those people, mm. then it it makes it looks as if nothing. It's gone. It's looking look as if nothing is happening. So they have to make it attractive. How do you make it attractive? Look at, look at, do you know barracks? Some of us, some of us that have police officers, some police officers that I know actually rent houses outside their barracks because the barracks looks like a toilet. It looks like, it looks, it looks you can't even bring your friend home. And most of them, that's why most of them, will, you find out that those that were sass then were the richest. 
among the police officers because they were not busting all these Yahoo guys and busting all and they were getting money out of them. But the truth is, if we find a way to make the police force the Nigerian be attractive, mm. how can it be attractive? One, it should be intelligence based. When you write exams, that um, it should be, it should not be just because uh, they just need people to just, to just die or just stay on the road. Your level of intelligence is important. Mm -hmm. Two, um, just the way top companies go for convocations and try to recruit best people, uh, governors go to convocations and announce huge amounts, they should also attend parades. At the end, when these when these guys are when these guys are being what is it called? Is it being launched or whatever after the training and announce whatever for the most intelligent. You will find that so many intelligent people will join. Mm -hmm. We have to find a way to make it, it, it interesting, attractive for the best brains. Sure. I doubt if any Nigerian parent will want their child to be a police officer. We we were in my school, there's something we call the career day. Oh. You understand? And two children out in my school were given <laughs> one one was told to look for the costume of a police officer. The other was <laughs> oh my god. The other was told to look for the costume of a military officer and the parents came to fight. Oh. What? How will you wish <laughs> that my child will be a police officer? Of all of them, I would rather have my child as a farmer with just a simple hoe and anything wow. than that bad. <laughs> yes, that bad. bad. That's that's mindset. Mindset. Look at our mindset. Okay. All right. Uh, special cook. So yeah. The thing is, this uh, the insecurity in the country is a direct. Um, uh, a reflection of uh, the power elite. If our leaders are honest mm -hmm. and genuinely want to deal with the insecurity in the country, they can handle it. Uh, Boko Haram, I believe, and some experts think so, could have been defeated during the time of Good Lord Jonathan. That was when the Americans got involved. Because the Americans saw the ties between Boko Haram and um, I ISIS. So it was, they saw it as a, a terrorist Muslim group. And since they've been, uh, Osama bin Laden was a Muslim terrorist. Those that bombed the Twin Towers were Muslim terrorists. So America has this endless fight. And those that were taking over parts of Iraq and parts of the Middle East were Muslim terrorists. America has this endless fight with Muslim terrorists. So they essentially came to Nigeria. They wanted to help. But the generals and the politicians didn't want them to continue because if they do, they raise the bar. Standards will become inevitably higher mm -hmm. and there will be less room for corruption. So they drove them, okay? Either by saying go or by their body language. Americans left. Met today, many people believe that Boko Haram could also have been defeated. And in the early days of the Buhari administration, Boko Haram was almost being defeated. They were driven out of all the territories they had occupied and driven into some sa, sa, some bits of forest. forest but then the war became commercialized. Like every war gets commercialized. The civil war was commercialized. It would, it would have ended in 1968. But because of the commercialization, Ojuku didn't want the war to end. And some people believed Adekunle didn't want the war to end. So they, they become a different thing altogether. So the war dragged till 1970 um, for personal reasons. So Boko Haram can be dealt with if corruption is taken out of it, if the leadership becomes honest. Banditry, the bandits are former thugs of the politicians. Election is coming, you arm 500 men with AK-47s. After the election, you've won the election, you abandon them with their guns. What are they going to do with the guns? You're not paying them anymore. Huh? You've empowered them. You've given them money. They've learned to live big and live large. Now they have a gun. So they go to kidnap. They go to steal. Those are the bandits. Full and he hates men. Is, uh, the average headsman cannot afford an AK-47. So they are being armed by some people. Who is arming them? Some say Mieti Allah. Buhari is a patron of Mieti Allah. Buhari is a Fulani man. And that's why the Fulani headsmen can be dealt with, but even the police don't want to confront them. The recent case in Akwaibum that got the governor of Akwaibum almost crying like a baby, which I thought was nonsensical because you can organize the youth in your state, it's their state. 
you can deal with the intruders coming in to foment trouble in your state. Oh. And you are there crying like a baby, like autumn. No, not autumn. The one in Benue does all the time. Yeah, autumn. autumn. Yeah. So always crying like a baby. Can't you secure your own state? You have everybody, everybody men, and you buy guns and arm them for election. But you can't arm them and train them to secure their states. So the, what happened was that 35 young Fulanese were caught in Akwa Ibo. And those that caught them disarmed them and called the police. The police let them go, not only letting them go, return their AK-47 to them. Okay. Is that so, a fact? Yeah. It's a simple yeah. fact. It's a fact. Okay. Uh, I, I so because the powers that be, they, they, are, they are comfortable with that, their blood so well, rampage across me. the country. I don't yes. want to interrupt you. Why do you think the police let them, they release, would they, they release them? Why? Instruction from above. I, 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 the powers that be. You know what? Fulani, Fulani expansionism. Fulani irredentism. I, I, I the the Allah. So it's the power from above or, or the, they bribe the police to let them go? No, they didn't bribe the police. It's, the police. it's across board. You, you, you the know police what, what, what cannot what was engage. My about the Fulani headsman issue with that. In the southwest, there are very wealthy Yoruba guys that have that owns these cattle stores but hire this full and um, headsman because that is that is what they do better that, do, that's that's do how they need to, how, do they need to be armed to graze to graze cattle let me, let me, they've been grazing cattle in nigeria from pre from pre-independence time I and they didn't need guns they had their arrows and catapults no, no, so, so the, point. the point is this the point is all this changed once Buhari came to power because Buhari is a party to full any expansionism. It's that simple. Oh, so that if the important. powers that don't work till I finish, okay. so if the powers that be want to deal with uh, uh, violence, uh, insecurity in Nigeria, they can. The powers that be can motivate the police. They can train the police well. They can pay them well. They don't want to. And most of the money directed to the police, com the police ministry of uh, police affairs this year it was one four hundred and four. No, two twenty twenty one budget is four hundred and forty one billion. Most of them will get stolen. They don't get to the real policemen to make life better for them. So it's a question of leadership. If the Nigerian leaders want peace to reign in Nigeria, peace will all to all. Or, or, or automatically reign in Nigeria. I, 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 agree, I, agree, okay. I, I agree with you to some ex, to some point. Yeah. Um, I was doing a study on on Google. How many? What's the force of the Nigerian police? What's the force? Their strength. Three hundred and something. Okay, for two hundred million. They can hire more. They choose to. Okay, it's I'll, the powers that be it's in their hands. Uh, it's uh, a uh, choice they have made. Yeah. I'd like to come in here. We this have very limited. We have just about three minutes to round up the okay. show. Well, very quickly, what do you want to say? Very quickly, in seconds. I, like I was saying, there are ethnic people that own cattle ranches mm -hmm. that hire full and headsmen to take care of them. Now, each of those people in those states are stakeholders in those states, and it is easier for them to wield their influence to call people, but they don't speak up whenever full and headsmen take the blame. So, fine, there are full and headsmen that taking the actions, but what, there is more to what is happening than what everybody I can see. see. Okay, uh, finally, uh, Samuel, I just want you to tell us, as a retired uh, U.S. police officer, how is the best way we can get our security system fixed in Nigeria, very quickly? Um, to me, I think, for, first of all, they, they, they have to be more aggressive hiring, because if, if Nigeria is 200, um, 200 million, and you only have 300,000 police officers, that number is low. Out of that 300,000 police officers, you have maybe 10 that goes to the king, 20 that go to the head of state. But one then goes by, to the by, the time, by the time you take all those numbers out, how many do you really have that patrol the street? It's few. So, you know, and policing in the state and in Nigeria is so different. Sometimes you, I'm driving down the street, I saw some of these trailers that, I mean, they're not even roadworthy. There should be an enforcement. When you talk about policing, it's not only policing the crime, it, it's traffic policing, it's enforcement on no, the road. No, no, it's, enforcement, it's, yes. It's aviation policing, it's marine policing, but those, those aspects are missing in Nigerian police force. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, I'm very sure, I hope we'll talk about this insecurity another time because we have...